You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Days of Our Lives fans. Belinda from Soap Dirt here, and I have got your early weekly spoilers for April 8th through 12th. There is some big stuff to unpack, and there's Everett action. We've got Holly and Tate stuff. We've got Eric big stuff with him and Sloan, and Clyde Weston is back next week. I can't wait to tell you guys all about this. If you haven't, though, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. And now, as as we always do for early edition spoilers real quick. I'm going to run down the action happening the rest of this week just to give you some context for what is coming next week. So on Wednesday, April 3rd, Ava and Harris are finally out of the bed. They're over at the bistro. They're enjoying a date. Very nice. Other than, you know, him letting Xander's life be ruined. I still have a big problem with Harris laying around getting laid when he's letting someone else go down for two people basically go down for crimes that she was aiding and abetting and engaging in. Trip sees Wendy suffering PTSD. This is her having like a little breakdown at their apartment and it is very stressful. He's very worried about her. And of course you'd be traumatized. I mean, they basically died, which really sucks. And Everett tells Steph what happened when Dr. Evans hypnotized him? They're talking at Brady Pub, and it looks like Jada may trip over them because she completely doubts what he is saying. Of course, she hates his guts and doubts everything he says. And Xander and Sarah go talk to Rafe Hernandez about his innocence. And he's got he's on this whole thing about his jogging gear and how it's very distinctive and it could have played into the setup. That takes us to Thursday, April 4th where Kate makes a promise to Lucas, who's still in his little Franciscan monk garb, promises that he will be free before too long. And Teresa and Brady finally get to bring Tate home. Of course, we saw on Monday they were saying that they could take him home, but they walk in the door on Thursday and they tell him, stay away from Holly. And he says he will, but we know he won't. Meanwhile, speaking of Holly, she and her mother have a big confrontation at the Demera Mansion, and her mother talks about the fallout from all these bad choices. And I wonder if she's going to mention the whole EJ Demera thing, basically defending EJ, saying he was trying to protect her and he wouldn't have done all that he did against Tate if not for Holly's lies, which is all true. EJ was being a tool, but he was a tool enabled by Holly's lies. Marlena and Paulina get together, have drinks, and they discuss the upcoming treatment that Paulina has. It looks like it's that iodine treatment, so it's for the whole thing that happened with her thyroid. And Alex wants Teresa to move back in again, which is good timing because Tate's back in his bedroom and she's got no place to lay her head. Friday, April 5th, we have Nicole deciding what punishment and consequences her daughter Holly will face for doing drugs and lying and all that, and Holly's not happy, but Nicole is is sticking to it and telling her this is what's gonna happen. So Stephanie gets some advice from Eric Brady about forgiveness. I don't know if this is forgiveness for Everett or forgiveness for Jada for saying harsh things to her, which I don't think Stephanie necessarily deserved. Everett shows up at the Spectator to talk about Stefan Demera's arrest to Chad and Leo Stark. And Tate just can't get Holly off his mind while hanging out with Brady. So he's going to go see her. And he actually sees her on the 4th, which is the last day that we have Jamie Martin man in the role. And then he sees her again, looks like on Friday, April 5th, which is which is when Leo Howard debuts in the role. I literally don't know if they're going to have like Tate walk out one door and then walk walk right back in with a different face. I think that would be hilarious. And days is weird. You never know what they'll do. So I'm very interested to see the segue between the two actors. Meanwhile, Jada is desperate because she has found out that she is still legally married to Bobby Stein. Sloan delivers this terrible news to her. And she wants to prove to Rafe that she's not married, but she definitely is still married to him. All right, now let's talk about what's happening. April 8th through 12th, I've got two juicy spots spoilers for each and every day. And of course, when you come back for the full weekly spoilers, I'll have a lot more. But right now, just two little tidbits for every single day, Monday, April 8th. John Black is talking to Harris Michaels about the time that Harris spent
event in Bayview. I wonder if John is thinking about checking himself in because he is still stressed out about all this pawn stuff. Meanwhile, Brady Black talks to Alex Kitiakis about Teresa Donovan and the relationship Brady has and had with her and that Alex had and has with her. And I'm very interested to see... I don't know if Brady is jealous or just concerned or what. Of course, he has no idea about all Teresa's lies and her gold digging and everything. I don't think he would be surprised, you know, in general. But lately, she's seemed to be behaving better. So it it might stun Brady when it all comes out. But it hasn't all come out yet. Look for something more in sweeps. Tuesday, April 9th, EJ Demera is arguing with his stepdaughter, Holly Jonas. And... Uh, I'm very curious about the nature of the argument. I mean, as you know how his ego is, he may say some things to her about how her lies made him look foolish as a DA. And that's that's kind of accurate and fair. I don't think his wife would like that. So I'm very interested to see the nature of this argument and who starts the fight. Meanwhile, big bad Clyde Weston is back on the scene on April 9th. He reaches out to Ava Vitale and he demands that she dig out something that he had hidden at the bistro and I guess deliver it to him. I don't know if it's drugs, if it's cash, if it's weapons, it's Clyde. So it could literally be anything that takes us to Wednesday, April 10th. Eric Brady talks to Sloane Peterson because she is late paying, I guess, her share of the rent. I don't know if they're on like a 50-50 thing, maybe a 70-30 because as a lawyer, she makes a lot money than him as an aspiring photographer slash stay-at-home dad. And she probably can't pay her rent because she's been paying blackmail to Leo Stark. So that should be an interesting conversation because, of course, she can't tell him that happened. And Kristen Demera chews out Holly and Nicole Walker is not having it. She's going to have a fight with Kristen. Now, so why would Kristen be chewing out Holly? Well, it's because of Tate. Because if you don't remember this little tidbit from a little more than a decade, Decade ago, Kristen Demera gave birth to Tate Black. If you don't remember this, she stole Brady and Teresa's embryo, had the baby implanted in her, and in early 2015, so slightly, you know, less than a decade ago, she gave birth to Tate. So in her twisted mind, you know, Tate's kind of like a son to her since she delivered him, and she is not going to like the fact at all that Holly left that boy sitting in jail because she was lying, and of course... Nicole is going to freak out because Nicole, you know, just can't stand Kristen. So lots and lots of fun. Of course, you know, the only reason Kristen has baby Rachel is because she wore Nicole masks to get Brady in her bed. So those two ladies have a very complicated and messy history. Thursday, April 11th, Stephanie talks to Everett and asks why he's not signing the divorce papers to just get Jada out of his life. And I don't know if he's not signing them because I'm still wondering at some point whether Bobby Stein is going to take over and be running the body because right now Everett's running the body, but he's really Bobby and we know this. So I don't know if it's just him holding back because he doesn't even remember being married to her or... If it's Bobby in the back of his head trying to get him to do scary things, because we did get a little glimpse of Bobby when Marlena hypnotized him this week. Did you see that? It was like, oh, Everett seems like he's scared of Bobby. I wonder if Bobby is some weird manifestation of, of their dad. I don't know. It's very, very strange. So... Also on Thursday, Holly and Tate have a nice romantic picnic, which I'm sure none of their parents will approve of. And that takes us to Friday, April 12th, when Xander is at The Spectator and he talks to Chad about them doing an investigation into the frame up job on him, which should be interesting since it's Chad's brother, Stefan, that framed him. Johnny and Chanel's honeymoon on Smith Island at the Horton Cabin is interrupted on Friday the 12th. And I'm very scared that it's 
it's going to be Clyde Weston. Also, I have an update for you guys real quick. I had just done a video recently about Bill Hayes' final air date and his funeral that is coming. And I do have a specific last air date for Bill Hayes' final scenes. And of course, that airs and then his funeral comes a good bit later. But July 11th, 2024 will be the last time that you see Bill Hayes in new scenes as Doug Williams on Days of Our Lives. They shot it in mid-December, and so usually with that six-month tape-to-air delay, it would air, you know, probably in June, but the powers that be postponed the episode so it will coincide with Susan Hayes' 81st birthday, and of course, she will be on screen as Julie in these last scenes with her and Doug. She mentioned that the powers that be at Days were being very sweet about all of this and have been checking in with her about how they're going to exit the character and write the, you know, the final ending for her, her husband on screen and off screen, and them airing his last episode on her birthday seems like a really nice gesture. I'm looking forward to seeing the scene because she said the scene was important. But of course, at the same time, I'm really sad because I know it's his last new scene. And he was having serious mobility issues at the time that he filmed. Of course, he was 98 when he passed away. And he was completely blind when he shot these scenes. So it's it's amazing that he was coming to work and still doing very good work, even, you know, with it, health issues plaguing him towards the end. All right, those are all of the days of our lives, early spoilers I have for you. Please drop your comments on what you're excited to see. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And please come back soon. We are here talking days of our lives seven days a week. And as always, this is Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 